Are you interested in creating or updating your babysitting binder? If so, stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to share with you all the important forms that I think should be in a babysitting binder. Hey sitters, welcome back to another video. It's Lydia, thanks for joining me. And in today's video, we're gonna go over some forms that I feel are important and why I feel they're important to have in our binders. Um, so I recently went and picked up this um, binder. My other one was falling apart. So I thought since I'm switching over um, from one binder to another, I'll show you and go through with you how to create one. And then also one of you guys asked about creating a babysitting binder. So I thought I might as well bring you along. So this first information form, well, the first couple information forms are going to be for the family. Um, but this first one I feel is very, the most important. It is the family information form, a new family information form. Um, and this basically takes down all of the family's information, names, numbers, addresses, emails, the kids' birthdays, uh, kids' names and allergies, food and medication. And then if there's any issues, behavioral, um, anxiety issues or anything along those lines, and then there's other information that I put in here about how they heard about me um, and then emergency contact. And then there's a couple other things on there. Um, so this one's really important. Uh, as you grow, you wanna make sure that you collect all of the family's information. This is how you're gonna know your family. When your client pool starts growing, uh, you don't wanna mix up family's information. For example, if family A has a child who's allergic to dairy and family B has an allergic reaction to peanuts, you don't want to mix that information up. You know that somebody's got an allergy here or there, but it's really important that you go through this information before you sit for a family um, so that you're refreshed and you know exactly the information you need to know before babysitting. So this family information form, I have them sign out or fill out. I make sure that I put the date that it was filled out at the top so that I remember to have them fill this out every six months. Um, this information form actually does not go in my babysitting binder. So I have a second binder that I keep here at the house and it has all of the forms of all of my clients. Now, if I am babysitting for a family, say the Smith family, I'll go in here and I'll pull out Smith family information and put it in my babysitting binder. That way I do have that information on me while I'm babysitting at their house, but I do not need to be carrying around all of my clients' information, all of them. That's not necessary. And it's really, I mean, not that it's secret secret, but this is sensitive information. I wouldn't want my information being out there um, to everybody. I'm okay with it being to my babysitter because that's important for them to know. So if I lose this binder while I'm out and about, or if, I like this is information I don't want anybody else to have their hands on except for me. So this binder with everybody's information stays here at the house. I will pull out the Smith family's information to bring with me because this is important information for me to have on me while I'm babysitting. That is the first most important one. Uh, the new family information form that I have all the clients fill out on the first time that I meet them. You know how I've always preached, try to meet the family before you babysit for them. In that meeting, this is the information that I have them fill out so that I have it for the next time I babysit. All right, this next form is the medical treatment authorization form. This is goes right along with the family information form that you have parents fill out. Um, this is for when, if there is an emergency, that the when the paramedics get there, you can hand this over to the paramedics and most of their questions will be answered. It has things on there like the last known weight of the child, um, medical information of the primary care, uh, medical insurance, the allergies, medica allergies to medications that they have, uh, any prescription drugs that the kid's taking. Uh, so I get this filled out and signed by the parents so that when I hand it over to the paramedics, most of their questions are answered and I can step away and go call the parents or call that emergency contact um, if the parents don't answer. So that is filled out as right along. I just staple it to the family information form and have them fill it out all at the same time. So that one goes in to, oh, and this one is one per kid. So if they have three kids, they're filling three of these out. The family information form, that's just one form for one family, but medical treatment authorization is per child. 
So that goes in there. The next one on my list is for the families to sign the night of. So before, it's a before you leave page and this gets the information for the night. So what time bedtime is, what the normal routine is, what would they like to do for the night if they've asked you for desserts or anything like that. Is that allowed? Um, the emergency contact, it is not, you can't ask for an emergency contact too much. Like you, that's so important. It's important information. So don't be afraid to keep asking for that every time you're there. Um, so there's a spot for that. If they were allowed to play outside or not, not what time is dinner? Uh, it asks about pets. Um, and then also it asks about if the kids are in a good mood or not to give me a heads up of like, am I walking into a, a grumpy situation or am I walking into a, a house with a child that's in a good mood? Um, and that helps me approach the children in the right sense. Like that gives me a heads up. Um, so I have families fill this out before they leave. Now the next one is the while you were gone form. So I fill this out. This Now we're getting into things that I fill out. Um, so the, while we were gone, we, what we did, what we ate um, for younger infants, if I worked for the day for somebody, they napped for from what time to what time, they went to bed at this time. And then it has like a little area for if they had a fun time, if they missed you but was quick to warm up, or if it was a bit of a rough night, so they can get an idea of how overall the night went. And then their listening skills, whether they were having a hard time listening to me or if they were pretty good with their listening skills, and then anything else I want on there. So these two are, while I'm at the house babysitting, before they leave, they fill this out. After they come back, this is filled out for them from me. So those are in there. Again, this is per family, so I make sure that I have um, a couple of those. The next one, okay, the rest of them are actually for me to fill out. These are extra forms. And the first one is a babysitting money log. So I have a little bit to talk about this one. Um, I think this is just as important as all the other ones. Um, this basically tracks your money. Who's paying you? when they're paying you, when you worked for them, what times you worked for them, uh, the amount they paid you, and the type of, of payment you got, whether it was cash, check, Venmo, um, PayPal, Zelle, whatever, whatever payment system you guys use. Um, now, why do I think this is important? I think it's overall very important to track how you're making your money, where you're making your money, and from who. Um, but I want to dive into it a little deeper and explain truly what this form can do for you and how this can help you make more money. Um, so diving straight in, the who, it is important to know who's booking you and how often they're booking you. This way you can reach out to those who are not booking you so often and get them on your calendar. The when. This is really important for you because you can find trends in when people book you most often. Are you being booked during the school year? Are you being booked mostly during the holidays? Are you, is the summer really big for you? Um, looking for those trends on when those people are booking you and marketing yourself in the off season. So if you're not getting booked often in the winter, you can start promoting yourself a little more than you would in the summer. Now the time. Babysitting for families during the nighttime versus the daytime. Mostly this is for me to go back to and say for clients who haven't paid me yet, hey, I just want to send a reminder that you haven't paid me yet. I babysat for you on this day from this time to this time. So really that's usually the only reason I need to look at the time. But also, again, trends if I'm being booked in the day versus at night. The next two columns are amount paid and type of payment. Um, Amount paid, making sure that you jot down what you're getting paid is obviously one of the important pieces, but this helps you know if you're getting paid correctly. So um, if you're getting underpaid, this will, you, you'll see it and be able to text that family, hey, I just wanted to let you know that for next time, my rate is this. Um, or if you're getting overpaid, I'm very transparent with my clients about if they overpay me. So I'll shoot them a text and say, hey, 
the rate was this, you overpaid me by this much, do you want me to send it back through Venmo if that's how they paid me or do you want me to drop off some cash? And nine times out of 10, they typically say, just keep it as a tip. So that is why I jot those down. But also if I have two clients that reach out to me for the same date, I can come back and look at this log to see A, who pays me correctly, who pays, and then on top of that, who pays the better tip <laughs> and also who books me longer. So I, if you're comparing family A and family B who both want to same to book the same slot and family A books you from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. and they are pretty good at tipping and family B only books you from 6 to 8.30, you most likely will want to book with family A because you're going to end up making more money that way. Um, obviously, you'll make more money if you're staying there longer, but on top of that, that tip as well. So having a money log is super important. It can make you more money in the end, basically. The next form I have is the babysitting referral tracker. You know, in all of my videos, I always talk about how I um, send a thank you card to those who share my name. I think it is super um, genuine and I appreciate it so much when my clients share my name with other clients. They talk about how hard it is because they don't want to lose me or lose time slots or babysitting dates. They don't want me to get busy, which I completely understand where they're coming from, but it's also very nice when they share my name. So I'm going, I track it. I go and send them a thank you card. And then after so many thank you cards, I send them a gift card. Uh, so on the babysitting referral tracker, it has basically at the top, I know I personally send out a thank you card whenever they share my name and then gift cards are sent every four um, referrals. But you can put whatever you want up here, whether it be two times that they share your name and they get a gift card or whatever. But that's up there for you. And then on it has the family that referred me. So the Smith families referred me the family they sent to me, the Johnson family, the date of the when the new client booked. So I think this is really important. So a family can share your name with people all they want. What truly matters in, is when that new family books you on the calendar and you actually babysit for that family. So that is what I go off of when I send thank you cards, is when I get a new family on the books and I babysat for them. So um, on there is date of when the new client booked so that I can see how far did it, how long did it take for that family to refer me to them actually booking me. So that's on their referral number so that I can keep track how many times the Smith family has referred me. The thank you card was sent and the date it was sent. So if it was sent and when the, it was sent and then the gift card was sent or and when it was sent as well. So this next sheet is the babysitting anniversary tracker for parents. Um, so in the family information form, there was a spot for them to write down their date anniversary. Now you can do a bunch of things with this. Well, first off, I actually transfer that date into here. So I have it all in one place. I have all of the family's dates in here and I have one place to look at it. But you can do a bunch of things with this. The first one you can do is sending them, um, well, sending the husband an email saying, hey, I know your anniversary is coming up. Would you like me to um, book, would you like to book with me on this slot? Would you like me to hold that date for you? Um, so you can reach out to them because usually they're the ones planning something and just basically have that date for them because it's their anniversary. The second one being that along the same lines, you can send them or give them a discount on your babysitting for their anniversary um, while you babysit for them or for the week of their anniversary. Uh, you can send an anniversary card. So at the beginning of the year, you write out all those cards and you can send out anniversary cards. Um, and you can set a reminder on your phone for a couple days in advance saying, hey, either send that out, send that email out or send that card out. Um, but that way it's all here. 
in the same place in there. You can use this to mark it, basically. So that is that. It has January, February, March, April. It has the parent and the date. Um, and there's a slot for every month. So I like to keep that with me. And then in the same realm, the babysitting birthday tracker. So it's basically the same thing just for birthdays for the children. Uh, I write down the child's birthday and the date, but the full date, not just the, the birthday, the month and the day, um, the full date. That way I know how old they are. Again, in, in the family information form, they fill that out. I transfer it to here so that I can send out birthday cards um, to all the kids. But that I also can look at this and know how old a kid is when I go to do my babysitting bag or when I go to babysit for them. I don't have to um, rack my brain in, in remembering how old they are. The year will be there and I can just remember, oh yeah, they're eight years old, so let me make my babysitting bag to fit that age. Um, so that's all here, one spot as well, and I don't have to be rummage, rummaging around in my family binder form for those dates. The next one is the price sheet. Um, so I really suggest that you write out a price sheet. Put all your prices on it for babysitting, for pet sitting if you want to walk dogs or, or pet sit for your families, any services that you want to offer, group babysitting, make sure that you put it on a price sheet. This is so that when a family asks you what your prices are, they're written down. You don't have to stumble. You don't have to give them an answer you didn't mean to give them. Uh, you don't have to say, let me think about it. It's right there in a price sheet. You don't have to second guess yourself. And um, you can even email this over to them. You can email it over to them. You can have them take a picture of it if it's in your babysitting binder. Um, so it's all right there. Also, if your babysitting client asks you, can I see your price sheet? And there's dogs sitting on it and they have a dog, they'll know that you do it. You should be telling families what, you, what services you offer, but this is a nice subtle way of saying, hey, not only do I babysit, I also pet sit if you're interested. Templates. I think it is really important to have all sorts of templates in there, whether they're templates for, this one's for the shoe la la, which I also have the book in here. So I also keep a little couple books in my binder so that I can read them to the, to the children. So in here is my shoe la la. Here's the template. If you haven't gone, uh, if you haven't checked out that video, go check it out. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below, but my templates stay in here as well. Um, that way, if I'm trying to make something, it's right there and I know where they are. Um, I do take my babysitting bag as well as my babysitting binder. Um, so those templates will go along with foam pieces. Uh, I also, um, I don't keep templates of these in there, but I do keep my games in uh, the binder as well. So I take these flat, pretty flat games and I stick them in here so that if you are in a pinch, you don't have your babysitting uh, bag with you, at least you have some stuff on you in your babysitting binder to play with the kids. I also put in here my CPR certification, so any certifications you have, a babysitting certification, CPR certification, anything that you can show families that say, hey, here's proof of my knowledge it is awesome to have on you as well. So here's what the final product looks like. My certifications, the family information form. I put this in order of what I would like to be there. Um, I have my game in here, the templates. So all of this you can find in links down in the description below. I'll make sure to put them down there, um, except for the pricing sheet because that is, going to be individualized for you. Personally, I don't know what you want to offer for services or pricing, so you'll have to make that one. But there are links for everything else that I talked about down in the description below. So that is it for my babysitting binder. I know it was a lot, but I think all of this is truly important to market yourself, to have on you, to be professional and organized when working with families. I think it is all very important. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button as well as hitting the subscribe button if you haven't already so you can learn more, to earn more, to have more fun. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.